So what I'm going to do today in that case is to start with a basic overview of what a very simple hardware architecture for some kind of signal processing algorithm. I'm basically going to take filtering as the uh, problem at hand and uh, see what kind of uh, basic architectures we can come up with. Look at a few different variants of that. And in particular, what we are trying to understand over here is some terminology associated with the uh, architecture. The problem that I'm going to take up is the simple FIR filter, the finite impulse response filter. Right? And a finite impulse response filter is essentially defined by its equation. Right? So this equation that we have over here, y of n equals summation k is equal to 0 up to n minus 1 h of k, x of n minus k is what defines the filter. Right? So the h of k are the coefficients of the filter. There are in this case n capital N such coefficients. And uh, what this is effectively saying is that the x of n minus k, right? Uh, what that means is the last capital N values of x are going to get multiplied by these filter coefficients added up and you'll get one output. Okay. Now this structure that I have drawn below the equation right, is what you would see in any textbook on signal processing as a sort of as what's called the direct form one implementation of a filter. Right. So this direct form one implementation is again a term that is used in the signal processing context. And uh, what it, uh, it basically refers to this particular type of implementation and it is relevant for filters essentially. It's not a generic thing for all signal processing algorithms. It's, it applies only in the context of such filters. In terms of the components of the architecture, right, what do we have over here? These rectangles are registers. Right? And what that means is that each value that gets stored over here is some, you know, it might be a 16 bit value or some such thing. It could be 16 bits, it could be 32 bits. The point is each of these rectangles is capable of storing a complete number. Okay. And uh, how many bits are used to represent that number is hidden from us. I mean, in this diagram, at least that's not uh, displayed, right? I don't really care about that. All that I say is that each of these arrows is a connection between a pair of components. Now, how many wires are involved in that connection? I'm not displaying it as part of this diagram. Okay. So this structure is usually called a block diagram or a schematic. And is probably the most intuitive and simple way of representing an architecture for a simple uh, application like this. So each of these rectangles, in other words, corresponds to one register. Uh, yeah, uh, so there's one small error in this uh, diagram. I forgot about it again. What should actually have happened is that I should have multiplied this by H0, right? The X of N should be multiplied by H0, which means it should be H1, H2, H3, and so on. Okay. So uh, in uh, with this modified diagram, what we'll have is H0 into X of N plus H1 into X of N minus 1, etc. Summing up to the final value Y of N that comes out over here. Okay. Now, the, as far as the components is concerned, like I said, there are registers. The registers are capable of holding numerical values, that is bits essentially, and are triggered by some clock. Okay. Now, in addition to that, the other type of component that I have is the multiplier right? and the assumption here is that a multiplier takes two values one of them would be x of n in this case the other value would be h of zero and multiplies them together and gives you an output okay so as we know when you multiply let's say two 16 bit numbers the result actually should be a 32 bit value right now do you really need to have a 32 bit value? Are you going to say that I'm actually doing this using some kind of fixed point representation, right? So maybe a 1.15 representation. 1.15 basically means one integer portion, 15 fractional portion, right? Or 8.8, .8, which would mean eight integer, eight fraction. 
and uh, you know depending on that i might also choose to say that even the output i'm going to round it off to some finite representation it need not be 32 bits in other words as i said once again none of that is sort of you know made explicit in this diagram how many bits do you use for the multiplication how many bits are there for each addition all of that is sort of uh, left out of the main part that we have over here okay and of course the third component third type of component that we have is the adder the hardware that we are assuming exists and it is obviously going to be technology dependent okay and why is that relevant because the delay that we have through each of these elements let's say you know some uh, propagation delay through uh, a multiplier right would depend on the particular technology that is being used right so if i have that information let's say that i tell you that ta is the propagation delay corresponding to an adder right and tm is the prop propagation delay corresponding to a multiplier right and of course this diagram you know I mean, the simplest thing to do will be to just say that this is x of n n minus 1 n minus 2 etc right i can define something called the critical path right so once again think of this as a pure digital logic circuit right where the multipliers are some complicated but combinational digital logic right and how would i implement a combinational multiplier i need to essentially do some kind of you know take the uh, multiplicand uh, uh, and it with each bit of the multiplier do some appropriate shifting adding i don't need any registers right which is why i i can assume that i it is possible for me to implement a completely combinational multiplier okay and if i had such a combinational multiplier then it would have some propagation delay associated with it and in that case i can look at this entire filter architecture that i have drawn over here as some kind of a digital circuit it has combinational elements which are the multipliers and adders and it has sequential elements which are the registers and then i can do a straightforward you know critical path analysis right what is the uh, minimum clock period that i need to use in order to operate the system without having any timing errors right all the things like setup time tcq all of those would be involved in that analysis but assuming that things like setup time tcq and all are small primarily my critical path is going to be dominated by the delay through a multiplier and the number of such adders that it needs to pass through right and the reason is there are no registers anywhere along this path what are the red uh, line that i have marked as the critical path okay so the overall critical path length in terms of time is going to be given by tm the delay through a multiplier plus n minus 1 adders because that is the length of the chain as seen over here okay that is for this particular architecture is it the best possible critical path probably not right there are better ways in which you can do the addition for example which would have a lower total critical path but the point is for this architecture this is the critical path okay so that in turn leads us to an interesting question right that critical path is a pure function of the circuit architecture itself right i have just looked at it as a digital circuit which has combinational elements and sequential elements and i have computed something called the critical path it does not care or know that this is a signal processing algorithm that i am trying to implement right on the other hand there is a concept of something called the sample rate and the sample rate basically determines what is the time difference between successive inputs successive samples that are coming into the system right in other words the time difference between the appearance of x of n minus 1 and x of n so in this case what can i say about the sample rate and the clock rate effectively what i'm going to assume is that this clock signal right is going to be applied to all the registers right so all of these things have some kind of a clock applied to them 
and the analysis that I have done, this TCP equal to TM plus N minus 1 into TA, right, essentially relates to this clock period. Okay. So what I have is that the TCP equal to TM plus N minus 1 times TA is such that this clock which I am applying to the resistors must have a period greater than that. And every tick of this clock in the structure that I have shown over here essentially pushes one sample through. Why is that? Because every time that the clock ticks, there will be a transfer of data across the registers right, from input to output of the registers. Okay, And this means that the values that are going into the multiplier shifts by 1. That effectively means that the important takeaway from all of this is that the sample rate in this case is exactly equal to the clock rate. Now you are probably thinking this was a fairly obvious uh, conclusion right from the beginning. Why am I taking making such a big deal out of it? And the reason is obviously that I want to uh, indicate that this is possible to do, uh, possible to implement this in a different way. 